Paul McGuire Grimes, ABC Minneapolis. Richard, it is an absolute honor getting to talk to you today. So thank you for the time today. I really enjoyed Jeannie. So thank you. No, you're very welcome. With those videos behind you. Yes, yes. It's a very real movie library. So yeah. Oh, very wow. real. If I was there, I'd be checking whether there are any of my films. Um, okay, I was going to save it for later, but here's this little dream. Okay, piece. okay. all right, you've passed the test. <laughs> yes. I'm curious, This so this is an updated remake of a TV movie you made back in 1991. What inspired you to go back to it? Oh, look, I'd always loved the story. And that story then was about a single guy whose girlfriend leaves him. And I'm such a family man now. I thought I can make a real family movie. I can make one where a family falls apart and a genie tries to bring a family together. And so it was, you know, moving from the sad single bloke I was to the, you know, um, battered father I am now. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, as we grow up and we age, like our lives and our priorities and our art changes no matter where we're at in life. And that makes total sense. You write a really great line in this film where you say, you'll know what you need when it happens. And I just love that kind of motto. Has this happened to you recently? Well, yeah, I mean, oddly enough, my life is changing quite a lot at the moment. I got married after 32 years with the same woman. So, and and the moment we got married, sort of everything changed. And now we're working out what do a married couple do? So I think that sounds like not a bad line to me. Right. Yeah, no, for sure. Now, there's a little Easter egg again in this movie too, Love Actually, which is celebrating its 20th anniversary. I remember seeing this specifically in the theaters and loving it. What does it mean to you knowing that this has become timeless and that there are families and people that watch us every Christmas year as part of their Christmas traditions? It is so strange because, you know, whenever you make a movie, there, there's a six month period when you think it's the worst movie of all time. So I consider it just like the luckiest thing to have happened. We just made our movie and hoped it would do well. And the fact that it's just for some reason, I think because of the number of plots, a repeat watch, that's just like a gift from God. I had my own genie 20 years ago. Oh, I mean, it's you you're laughing in it because you have funny characters and then your heart is breaking when you hear Joni Mitchell's both sides now. Like, oh my God, like, are you kidding? Like, it's so good. Um, I'm curious, you know, Christmas movies are so much part of our traditions like we were talking about. What memories do you have of watching Christmas movies with your family growing up? I mean, of course, you couldn't choose what you watched in those days. The two that I remember most strongly are White Christmas because mm. my dad was a huge Bing Crosby fan. And then the Charlie Brown Christmas animation. Do you remember that one? It and the plays sand, here every year on CB. The like, sand and Christmas tree, and then they made the best of it. So those were my, those are the two that I remember us watching all the time. Absolutely. The Vince Guaraldi trio with Charlie Brown Christmas. And my husband and I watch White Christmas every year because it's such a, yeah. it's so rich. You know, if you could have one wish this holiday season, what would it be? I mean, I, I want to say another pair is, you know, I think we're all just praying for peace, I'm afraid. I think right. that this this year, that's what we're all praying for. Yeah, at peace everywhere. And with some people, and I, you know, Sam and I were talking about this concept where Christmas movies for, I think, for two hours can bring a family, people together of different backgrounds and thought processes and beliefs. And you can all just share that magical thing that is a Christmas movie. So I got the wrap. Richard, thank you for the time, Dane. Thank you for such a treasure trove of wonderful movies that we watch time and time again. So thank you for this. You're really sweet. Thank you very much. Merry thank Christmas. You. Buddy. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too. Thank you. Paul McGuire Grimes, ABC Minneapolis. Sam, it is really great talking today. I enjoyed Jeannie, so thank you for the time today. Thank you. Thanks for talking. Yeah. Now let's talk about Melissa McCarthy. Everyone loves her. She is so funny. But for you, what makes her such a great actress and collaborator, especially in the role of Flora the Genie? I think, you know, working with Melissa was incredible and obviously her comedic talents speak for themselves. Everyone, you know, has seen and loved so many of her movies and, and, and she's made us laugh so much. I think the thing for me is there's such a kind of deep, you know, she's an incredible dramatic actress too. And I think that's the case for, you know, a lot of my favorite comedic actors. There is, you know, when you see, uh, you know, people who again have made us laugh in a lot of movies, but then they're in something that's a little more grounded or has a little more pathos or something like that. Um, it kind of it kind of cuts both ways in this really interesting direction where the funny stuff 
feels a little more real and a little more rich and the stuff that's supposed to be emotional has a kind of humor to it and a lack of self-seriousness that's that's really nice and you know i think watching her walk that line and seeing that kind of blend of tones uh was you know really important to me for this movie but but really incredible to get to watch her do oh absolutely i mean i that made me think of her performance in can you ever forgive me right was- so remarkable. And then, of course, yeah. I then thought about Robin Williams and the way that he could blend both. Oh, my God. We could talk about both of them forever. Now, Richard Cruz has written some of the great rom-coms of all time, including Love Ashley, which I saw a little Easter egg in the movie before that. I don't want to spoil it. But is it an automatic yes when you're given a Richard Curtis script to, like, take on? How did it come to you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, this it, it, it came to me... Uh, you know, through the production company working title, and I had met with them a couple times. They've made all of Richard's movies and and a lot of other movies that I'm a huge fan of. So just getting to meet with them in the first place was incredible. But then, you know, I had had a couple meetings with one of the producers there, and and at the end of the second one, she said, you know, I do have this other script, and it was written by one of our great screenwriters, and and I, you know, and. Obviously, immediately when she said it was Richard, I was like, please let me read it. And I think, you know, I I, I you know wasn't crazy enough to think like, oh, this is a slam dunk for me. I'm going to be the person to direct this movie. So at first I was just like, I hope I can just meet him or something. It was more like a, you know, like a fan club thing. Um, But then we got to make this movie together and it was an incredible experience. And Richard is just so funny and so wise and sweet and so talented, obviously. And, and, um, you know, getting to make this movie with him was a total dream. Yeah, oh my God, absolutely. I'd be perfect to be in one of his kind of worlds that he's created. I yeah. love the Christmas time in New York City. I think it's so magical. What do you most love about it? And why is it the quintessential location for a Christmas movie? I think New York at Christmas is is just, you know, as magic as it gets. I think the city, even without Christmas, is 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 really magical and kind of heightens everything. You know, I've gotten I've been very lucky to shoot a few things in New York, but I think it's a place that just always kind of, you know, you bring them, you, you, you bring a certain amount of magic to it that's, you know, whether you have spent time there or you haven't, it's kind of the city of, of people's dreams, I think, and, 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 and fantasies. And so at Christmas, that's only kind of heightened uh, even further. And, and, you know, I think there's just so much that we think about, whether it's Central Park and the ice rink or, you know, it's not there anymore, sadly, but when I was a little kid, you know, F.A.O. Schwartz or something, and the kind of, you know, you think about movies like Home Alone 2 and, and you know, not a Christmas movie, but big, and just, you know, I think for a movie for families, um, uh, you know, the kind of movie we were trying to make here that, you know, that adults and kids can watch together and, and that the whole family can enjoy, there's just nothing like the scale and the scope and the magic you get from New York, and, and especially at Christmas. Oh, absolutely. I love it. I just, I would love to go there this season. Last but not least, what is the one wish you have for this holiday season? Well, you say for this holiday season, I was going to have a joke answer, so now I think I have to have a real answer because you just said that and I... My initial answer was going to be, I wish pizza was good for you, but that's you know, kind of tame. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I wish, you know, I think not to, not to grandstand or anything to try to keep it simple. I think, you know, Richard and I, from the very beginning talked about this movie being one that people could come together and watch with friends and family and loved ones. And, you know, the world is really complicated and, 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 you know, kind of nutty right now. And there's a lot that everybody's feeling. And so I hope, uh, you know, in general, that that people find solace from that, and you know, I think not to th- toot our horn, but one of you know, one of the ways to do that might be watching this movie, which we just hoped, you know, would be a, a kind of, if if nothing else, a sort of cozy distraction, um, you know, as as we all sort of you know go through all the all the stuff that's going on. Oh, 100%. And I think that Christmas movies have that magic to just let us escape for two hours and be one together. I got the wrap. Sam, thank you for the time tonight. I hope people enjoy Genie. Thank you. Thank you.